one, and I'm, I'm really glad to share this, um, this presentation with you. Let me share my screen so we can already start because of the time. So yeah, here we go. Um, um, I have been challenged by this topic. As soon as I start um, trying to make this, to create out of this topic a presentation, it was really good for me many things that I learned. Um, and I'm glad that I'm, I can share with you today. Again, it's just uh, maybe ideas. Maybe from my um, thoughts, you can go even more deep according to rea your reality. But OK, if, let's start asking you if we could maybe summarize the mission. What is our mission as a church, as a leaders, as a pastors, as a, uh, working with youth? Our mission, and problem, probably some of you will point to Matthew 28. Um, and I think you are right. I mean, we can find that a very important mission to us. What is our mission? Um, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Um, there are some words that people usually, um, they bold, people bold uh, when they are reading this verse. The authority that we have when we, when we preach the gospel and we share the gospel. Uh, to go, that is our mission, to go, make disciples, baptize people. But Today, I want to focus in another verb, is teaching. I think that is the point in this, for us today in this, um, in this presentation. Because if you want to, um, to come close to our youth, in our youth group, or any small group that you have, or even if you want to share uh, the message of the gospel to someone, uh, teaching, I think, is the most important process uh, when we start this. Because through teaching, someone can make they can be can become a disciple. To teaching, someone can understand and be baptized. But the process is starting with the teaching, and um, so today I want to uh, focus on this, on the teaching part. And it's interesting that um, when you go to the Greek didasko, uh, I'm not a Greek uh, expertise, but something like this. Um, means to provide instruction in a formal or informal setting. It's interesting that sometimes when you talk about teaching, some of the people have this image of the professor in front of a classroom, and he's the he's the uh, he's the expertise. He has he knows everything. So he he just starting presenting some topics. Everybody listen to him. Everybody cops what he's saying. And then they just, um, when they have the exam, they just write exactly what the professor said. And some people understand this as a teaching. So they learn something out of that. But I think when we come to sharing the gospel, introducing the spiritual topic um, to youth, especially to youth, but to, uh, to this new generation, uh, I think um, we cannot just come and say, I am the pastor, I am the leader, I have a master, I have a doctor, and that's it. And then I will show you now what you need to believe. You need to believe this, 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 this about these doctrines, and that's what you need. Um, I think um, teaching to them, when you come to this point to, intro, um, to bring a spiritual topics, needs to be a little bit different. So today, that would be my question. How can we teach? spiritual topics into a youth group or um, to a new generation of people that we have around us today. So that would be my question today. Uh, I divided this presentation in seven uh, tips, okay? The first ones, they are a little bit longer and the last ones are a little bit short because maybe you'll be tired by the end of this presentation. So I, I made them short. So I hope you enjoy some of these tips and this can be also benefit to you as well as for me. Okay, so my first tip, when you, if you want to teach spiritual topics, needs to be to a, a dialogical approach. What I want to say by that, our goal 
should be to win an argument. Uh, our goal should not be to win an argument, but to win a friend. It's different. If you just want to win an argument, you come with your best topics, your best points, and you try to present and you try to convince, convince people just to believe in what you want. But I think here uh, we need something different. We need to create some relationship. When you work with youth, you need to create, you need to build some relationship, good relationship with them. And the first step is to have a, a good dialogue with them. How can we have that? How, how is that possible? What, what that means? Um, so when you want to present something, you should or we should ask meaningful questions and then listen actively. Um, we need to learn how to ask questions. You know, this is a process. And I challenge you, if you go online and, and find how can you um, uh, ask good questions, meaningful questions, it's a challenge. It's not simple to come with some questions that can be um, uh, interesting for the youth. But at the same time, as, uh, once you ask the question, give time, stay silent to listen to them. Listen to what they will say about them. And listen uh, also with your heart uh, behind the words, you know, through maybe some answers, you can try to understand the group that you are working with. So I think this is really, really, really important to listen very well your group. It's not just to come and teach them something, but also to listen and learn from them. I think that can be a good, um, good experience. Um, there is a, uh, one book called Partners in Preaching. And there is a quote says, here is connected to preaching, but you can use maybe teaching here. We can um, use the word teaching, but preaching must have the quality of dialogue or teaching must have the quality of dialogue. Otherwise, it will be um, arrogant and untrustworthy or remain simply a statement abstracted from life. You know, if you don't have, if you don't give space, when you bring something to the youth, if you don't bring space for dialogue, maybe this can sound really arrogant for them. And they maybe can learn something, but maybe they will not completely agree because they didn't have a chance to talk to you, to dialogue with you. Um, I also want to um, point something interesting here that I was, when you go to the Bible, one of the words, uh, words most commonly used to describe Paul at work, and it's very interesting, is the word reasoning with his, uh, 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 um, with his group, the people that he was talking with. Um, and it's interesting that this word from Greek come from the root of our word dialogue. So Paul, he was dialogue with people. He was not just preaching just passing information. He was dialogue with people. And we'll see very soon one example from the Bible. But when I talk about dialogue, it means to stand alongside people, to look at the truth together. You know, um, it's not, I mean, we put the truth in front of us. We put the message in front of us. We put the Bible in front of us. We, we put some uh, spiritual topics in front of us. And then we, we stay side by side. And then we look for the truth, we look for the message, we look for the story, and then together we try to come with some ideas. We try to see some benefit out of that. I think that is a dialogue. When we, together, we try to uh, come with some principles. And here's an example from the Bible, from uh, Paul. Uh, it's in Acts chapter 17, start on verse two, you know? And Paul went in and as, as was his custom. And on the three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures. So he dialogued with them about scriptures. He didn't just preach. He dialogued with them about scripture. And providing that was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from that and saying, this Jesus whom I proclaim to you is the Christ. And look what, is, uh, what happened. And some of them were persuaded. So when he dialogue with people means that they share ideas together. He built something. And in the end, people understood his message. 
So I would say my first tip, if you are working with youth, you should start with a dialogue you know, approach. Just come, just, just don't try to preach to them. Just, just don't try to convince them. Try to dialogue. Ask questions, listen to them. Okay, and uh, leave them with food for thought rather than pressing uh, your own opinion or force feeding them doctrine. Uh, you know, so give ideas, give good thoughts and live with them and trust in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will continue to work. Just don't try to give all that they know. They need to know all these and these are the, all the arguments that they need. No, no, hey, here are some ideas. Go think about, come next week. Let's continue talk, dialogue about this. Okay, our second, my second tip um, for today. Uh, use inductive teaching. Um, I was thinking about the uh, de de detective, detective. You know what I mean, right? Oh, okay. So, what makes Sherlock Holmes such a great detective? You know, what makes him so special? Um, well, maybe uh, people can argue that oh, because he's a British charm, and you know. Um, He's, he's a very good knowledge about crime and all this, or he's understanding about the human behaviors. But I think we make all these stories or games, including involving detective, is that um, the logical process of inductive reason that they come and they bring good conclusion, conclusions in the end. And that is really interesting, you know? Think about a detective. The detective, what he does, he starts finding some pieces, pieces, and then he starts building something together. And then in one point, you have the big picture. And that's, I think, how maybe we should present the gospel to the youth. Um, let's make a, a differentiation about deductive and inductive approach. And I think most of you already know what I'm talking about, you know, by the, the deductive approach which is maybe what most of the people has used over the last 100 years. Um, usually what happened? You have a big idea, you have a central message, and then you starting justifying what you're claiming. You know, you justify that. But you already have the thing clear to you. So that's the message. Now I will prove to you why I'm right. And then you just boom, 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 that's it. What is the inductive approach? It's the, exactly the opposite. You start looking from the pieces, different pieces, and put the pieces together as a detec detective. And then you put all these pieces together, 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 until you finally come with a principle. When you work with youth, I think this is a very good way to apply to them. You know? Um, um, the Duchess moves from the conclusion to the specific, so the points. And that seeks to move from this, the, these points toward the conclusion. It's like that. It's, you come to a point that you are open, even you, to learn something from your group. You just don't come to them, hey, I know exactly what I want to teach you, and I will, that's my point. I'll just give you some proof um, that I'm right. No. Hey guys, I have been checking this. Look this verse. Look this idea. Look what happened. Look this story. How, when we put all this together, what do you see? It's a kind of uh, puzzles. You know, when we start playing with puzzles, putting the pieces together, everybody can help a little bit. But in the end, you have the big picture. And I think this is a very important way uh, dealing with um, youth. Um, and we have a very clear example in the Bible, you know, the sermon, Peter's sermon in uh, Acts 2. If you read, we'll not have time to read now, but you can read later. If you, you will see that Peter starts from what was happening there. He just pointed that all oh, the, these apostles, they're uh, having this, they're speaking tongues. Okay, and then he quotes Joel too. He brought another piece to the conversation. And then he started 
uh, to show some parts of the life of Jesus, you know, life and death and resurrection. He was building something to them. And then through this inductive movement, he comes to this climax of his uh, point that Jesus is both Lord and Christ. And then he appealed for people to repent and be baptized. He didn't start from the end. Hey, guys, Jesus is the Savior. Now listen to me. Because this, this. No. He started from the opposite. Are you seeing what happened here? They are speaking tongues. Do you remember what Joel said in chapter 2? Oh, my goodness. It's happening here now. Oh, look, look the life of Jesus. This, 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 this. And in the end, the conclusion, when he built all the steps, was that Jesus was Lord and Christ. I think... Um, that can be a very nice way to present gospel to the youth in a dial um, through dialogue and also in this inductive um, approach. Uh, and this is our goal, you know. We should motivate our group to partake in an exercise of um, natural discovery leading to a moment of realization and understanding, sometimes known as the aha moment. Do you understand this? You have to bring your group, not just them to, uh, to know what you know, but you have to help them to together with you as a leader, uh, doesn't matter how old are you, if you are a little bit older or younger, if you are the leader of this youth, together with them, you should come to a moment where you you present together some peace and they will see this aha moment. You know, they will have this, wow, I got it. That's nice. I saw now the point of this, of this topic. I think this is really nice. And this we can apply to any doctrine. This we can use through many stories in the Bible. Give them a chance to find the meaning. Give them a chance to understand by them by themselves. And this is good because if you teach them how they can find these uh, points or these doctrines or the message from the Bible, they can continue doing without you. And I think that is our, one of our biggest challenges. We cannot uh, have only youth depending on the leaders. Oh, whatever my pastor says, that, that's what I will believe. No, we need to create youth that they can understand by themselves the Bible through uh, the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now we come to the third, which is very common. Uh, any book that you take from postmodern or new generation, generation Z, whatever you come to the, they says, uh, people, the author says, use storytelling. People love stories. Whether in movies, television, theater, everyone loves stories. Doesn't matter who you are. There is a kind of story that you like to listen. You know, there are uh, every little children. Uh, my, my daughter, every, every night or every morning, she asked me, Daddy, can you please share a story with me? You know, people love stories. And why do you think our youth, they also, they don't love stories. They love stories. And why don't share stories with them? Why can we not really, through stories, present the gospel? So uh, you can, this is a suggestion, huh? just a suggestion. You can introduce the Bible as a story about God's personal experience. It's a kind of his biography. It's the biography of God, the Bible. And then you present this in a broken up to small stories. You know, like, is it from the Bible? You have these small stories that when you combine, then you have this big story of salvation, of uh, the plan of redemption. That can be a, a good way to uh, present the Bible. And if you look to nowadays, you can find many, many Bible studies who are based on narratives, stories from the Bible. You know, instead of just uh, some old Bible studies, they usually go from doctrine. So about the Sabbath, and then they give many, many verses that prove about the Sabbath about the state of the dead. Then they prove many texts. Why you don't do the opposite? Why you don't take stories? And from the stories, you leave, you allow this message from the Bible, these principles to come in through. 
I think that that is the point here. When you come to the youth, tell the story. Allow them to be part of the story, to know the character of the story. Uh, bring more information about the story. Contextualize the story for them and allow the story, um, share with them some of the God's principles to them. And I think all of us, we agree. Jesus was the master storyteller, you know? Um, we see constantly Jesus sharing his stories in the Bible. Most of his sermons was based uh, through stories. And he was always using things that were connected to people. Uh, um, uh, from their from their from their time, so that's that's important. Jesus is our example, you know. I mean, come on, we can easily uh, remember some stories from the Bible um, that are connected to Jesus. Um, when he was trying to uh, explain the importance of the foundation in life, he used the story of building a house in the sand and a, a house in the rock. You know that he used a story, and probably. All of us will, will know the point of the story. We don't need even one to explain to us. Only through the story, we understand the point that Jesus was presenting. Uh, about the lost, how Jesus uh, loved the lost and, and all this. He shared the story of the prodigal son. You know, We've, We know already the love of God, just knowing the story of the prodigal son. How beautiful is that story? Um, and uh, about the kingdom of God, oh my goodness, he presents many stories, the mustard seed, seed the, um, anyway, uh, many stories that we can find in the Bible, Jesus using to bring a point, you know, to present his point. Why not to use the same principle? Um, I, I was reading um, this story from Rab, you know, from Joshua chapter 2. Look what she says about, about uh, how she um, came to know God. Look how it's interesting this. Uh, she was talking to them, and then she uh, explained to the men, the men that was, uh, they, she was protecting. I know that the Lord has given you the land. Um, let me move here. Oh, and how she realized that. For we have heard how the Lord. And then she started using many examples. I heard how the Lord did that. I, I, I heard how the Lord did that. And it's interesting. I mean, I, I conclude by that. I conclude by that. That no one ever gave her officially a Bible study. You know, No one preached to her. Um, no one presented to her some doctrines. Um, everything that she knew about God was based on stories. I heard what God did. Why I heard what I, I, I heard what he promised to you. I heard his stories. And you know why? I believe in him. And she ended up in the line of Christ because she heard story from others. That's so nice, so beautiful to see how powerful a story can be and, and can change a life of a person. So. And when we talk about stories, of course, there is, a, there is one of the most powerful stories that is your story. It's your testimony. That's maybe the most powerful story that you can share. So um, Swindle, he says, uh, the sep uh, skept may deny your doctrine or attack your church, but he cannot honestly ignore the fact that your life has been changing. No one can deny your testimony. So also, I challenge you, when you come to talk to youth, when you come to introduce some spiritual topics, share your story. Share, share some challenge that you have. Share your story. This is powerful. And as more personal you are in your stories, more people are touched by the stories. More people are um, open to listen and to understand um, to your stories. Okay, now for my fourth tip to you tonight. Um, use, when you talk, to, uh, when you present something for youth, you should use audiovisuals, drama, or art, media. That, that maybe should be the word, media. 
don't you know maybe some people has this prejudice that oh no no we need to use the bible the bible only you know um i i remember one of my professors and every time he was coming to preach in a church people say hey do you need a powerpoint and he say no i will just point to the power in my sermon i don't need a powerpoint i'll just point to the power you know i mean i understand him but don't don't have prejudice about this media thing used it because our youth they like it they use it they know how to use it they love movies they love to interact um and to see some i don't know music arts so be creative share the uh, in the way that you uh, the gospel in a very creative way uh, but i think it's very important to make a, a differentiation and between share the gospel with creativity and just trying to entertain them. I'm not talking about to entertain them. And when we talk about maybe small groups or youth group or friendship groups, sometimes we have the idea, no, let's just have some games, some activities, and let's just entertain them. Let's make them come to church and that's it. Uh, I think it's part of that. I think it's important to have some games and activities, social activities, but our challenge, our, uh, our main, um, uh, we were called to share the gospel. So be creative, uh, be creative, try some ideas, try different things, but remember, you want to give a message to them. To them. You want to present something um, important to them. Um, I want to, I mean, you know, uh, maybe one idea that I can share with you. Um, let's say you can ask your group, hey guys, um, can you maybe um, share with me or recommend to me one documentary that is about racial justice? Can you share something that you have watched and it's really good and you think it's important? And you as a leader, you should watch and you should try to see what are the, the, the main points, what are the big things. And then you try to apply something that they watch it. You try to apply this now in your spiritual content, you know? Let's say um, when you watch this, something about um, social or racial justice, you come to this equality, you know, this idea of equality. Um, you can easily take from this idea and present, let's say, God's creation. You can take and maybe present the Sabbath out of them. And I think that can be very good and useful for them. You come from a, a kind of movie or video that they watch it, and you try to, to apply this um, through um, bringing some spiritual thoughts. I know some pastors, I know some leaders who usually, they, they even use some movies from Hollywood. And because, you know, in the end, most of these movies, you have the same um, idea from the great controversy. You have the great controversy. So they try to use, sometimes even they show, uh, they share some parts of the movie, some minutes of the movie. And then they uh, bring all the group to a discussion. And he tries through this move, and he tried from the movie to take spiritual lessons and help the youth to be more, um, um, every time they watch a movie to be more um, open and to see these details sometimes in some, um, um, some different movies. So I challenge you, um, use something like that. You know, go online. Nowadays, we have so many movies, so many videos on YouTube. Or try to be creative. Bring something that your group, they can maybe um, connect with. And then in the end, you always try to bring something spiritual out of that. But again, through a dialogue. Just don't you know, help ask them, what do you see here? What is happening in the story? Uh, what character is this? Um, person in the story has. What about this other one? You see, try to see these details through media in general. Now, the fifth one I think is really, really important. My fifth, uh, the fifth tip, when you come, uh, when you are teaching, um, when you are teaching youth. Okay, and that's the, my, maybe you will have to use many times the word or the sentence, I don't, no. I grew up 
in this, um, you know, in this, uh, in a kind of church that the pastor or the leader, he should know everything. So, oh, we'll talk about music. Oh, I know. I know the music is this and this and this. And this. Oh, well, today we'll talk about this. I know. Relationship. I know. I know. I know. The pastor should have all the answers. The leader should have all the answers. Um, and uh, I like the idea. Sometimes leaders, they, they do. Let's talk when you can ask whatever you want to leaders, to the pastors. But please be honest to your group. If you are teaching something and you come to a point that you don't know, don't try to, oh, but uh, you know, that is the idea, but uh, here, but uh, just say, I don't know. I have said, I don't know more times that I can remember already my ministry. And not in the beginning. In the beginning, I knew everything. But now I realize that, please, I don't know. And as much as I said, I don't know, then I, I really have this experience to, okay, I will look for some answers and I will bring to you. And this make the, usually make the youth of my group to trust in me because they know if I don't know, I will not try to lie to them. I will not try to prove something to them that is not right. I will look for answers. And then I bring some answers and we discuss together. And if it's not enough, we'll go together. We, we look for more answers until Maybe we come to a conclusion. And sometimes there is no answer. And it's okay. It's, at least I don't have the answer right now. I remember uh, Ty Gibson, Pastor Ty Gibson. Some of you maybe know him. He's from, uh, he works in America. And uh, he was sharing a little bit about his conversion, conversion to Christianity. And he said that uh, one pastor, one pastor from his um, um, city, um, from his community, he was coming to visit his mom. And having Bible studies with his mom. And he was really like, I don't want him. I don't want him, my mom be involved with this church. And I would try to come with some questions to really put his, this pastor in his place, you know, to so my mom also she will understand that he we cannot trust on him. And uh, you know what happened? One day he came to this pastor. Uh, his name is uh, what's the name of the pastor? I took class with him at Andrews. Kidder, Kidder, Pastor um, Kidder. Um, and then he came to him and said, you know, let me ask you something. How is that possible? A God who loves, as you present from the Bible, allows all these kids, all these people around the world to suffer so much. How is that possible? Or he doesn't love them, or he is not just to allow all this to happen. And he said, okay, now whatever he answered, I'll get him. You know, because if you say, but, eh, so he's not loved. Someone who loves cannot allow this. Or, but, oh, so he's not just. Okay. In the end, he says that the pastor Kitty, he looks at him and say, you know, I don't know. I also have the same question. How is that possible? I don't know. And because of this answer, the simple answer, I don't know, uh, Ty Gibson, he started a Bible study with Pastor Kitty. And he was baptized. And he became today, um, uh, now he's one of the guys who studied more and tried to share the gospel um, through, um, um, among the youth and postmodern group. You see, so please. When you are teaching spiritual thoughts, it doesn't matter who you are. If you don't know the answer, just say, I don't know. And probably this will open doors to you and not close doors to you. Okay, sixth, we are coming to the end. Um, this is a big challenge. Address the real world in which your listeners live. That's the challenge. Because some of the sometimes we share ideas, uh, we share messages, sermons, uh, lectures, presentations that no one are looking for. The I mean, we give answers for questions that no one is asking. That's the point, you know. We try to answer problems that no one have, no one care for the problems, 
And we need to address to the problems that our youth, they, uh, the problems that they have. So uh, let's, let, let me uh, give an example. Let's say you start your, uh, your sermon saying about your rock collections. You know, oh, I make uh, collections from rocks and all these. And then you start talking about this. Well, it's interesting. Maybe a lot of people will find like interesting. But in the end, you know, they will probably just read, they, they will listen to you, but they, they will not really connect to that because maybe, I don't know, maybe uh, not everybody has collections are very, they give so much values for collections like that. But if we start the sermon saying, hey, when I, when I was in high school, I, the girl that I love it, I tried to connect with her and you know what happened. Immediately, all, all the youth, they will open all the two uh, ears to you. They will connect. They will look to you. Yes, share to us what happened. Wow, because all of us, we in some point of our lives, we have this, you know, this um, butterfly in the, on the st in the stomach where we have these feelings for someone. And when you try to start in sharing things like that, immediately, people will connect to you. And then our challenge is to move our youth from indifference to identification, identification, you know? That is our challenge because um, they, in the beginning, most of them are indifferent to you, what you are saying because maybe they are not looking for that. But if we start with something that immediately connects to them, a story, a point, a illustration, uh, one quote, one uh, oh, or one problem. When you raise a problem, that immediately creates some um, identification. I remember here, uh, we have a French group here in Albania, in my church in Korcha. And I remember that uh, one week before the, the, the New Year school starts, we did a, 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 a small group together. And then I brought this idea that, uh, um, your value cannot be um, cannot be presented by your grades. You understand? You cannot see yourself only based on your grades. When I start with this immediately, I saw that they already connect to me. Because in some way, people feel disappointed be because of their grades. Because some parents, they look to you based on their grades. They are not there in the school. So they take your grades. Oh, you are not doing well here. You are not doing good here. What happened to you? Your brother is better than you. Your sister is better than you. Well, so immediately when I share all this, they connect because that was also my reality. When I was young in the school, I remember bringing my grades to my parents and see how they react to them. And I was trying to say, no, I'm more than that. I'm more than all these grades that you see there. But you see, uh, there are some topics that immediately you connect with them. So, and then uh, we come to our um, last um, tip, which is don't engage listeners at the expense of the message. And I think this is really important for us to understand. All that I share here today, all the seven tips that I share, um, I, I want to make this very uh, clear to you. Methods may change, but the message has not. We don't need to change the message. We have a special, special message. And we need to uh, be sure when we will present the, the gospel, we don't need to bring a different gospel. We can trust with the authority that we read in Matthew 28, that the authority that God gave to us is to present this gospel, the gospel of the Bible. And uh, there is sometimes two dangers, you know, the first danger, sometimes preacher, uh, they lose the confidence in God's words or just the, the Bible. No, no, I cannot use only the Bible. You know, uh, the Bible is not enough. No, the Bible is enough. You can trust in the Bible. Don't be afraid to present the gospel to our youth. Don't be afraid to present the stories from the Bible. Don't be afraid to present the Bible to them. Follow some good as we share some ideas but don't be afraid to present the Bible. and then 
Some people try to uh, com uh, make compromise God's truth to accommodate to this. No, I will not. I cannot be. I have to be soft here because if not, uh, the the youth they will not understand. They will no. You know. I mean, you can you can speak with love. You can speak with respect. You can dialogue with them, but don't compromise God's truth just to be nice to your group. They need. Um, they need someone who share the truth with them. So um, I just want to say, to finish this part, to say to you like this, um, how we know, how, uh, what is my, let's say, what is my, my goal as a youth leader? How, what, what is my um, goal as a pastor here in my church, as a leader for a youth alive group? My goal is to make or to turn uh, my group, my youth group, to, for them to really appreciate the biblical message. That's my challenge. That's my goal. I want them to see the beauty of the Bible. I want them to see this in a, a special way. I want them to see the Bible as a, a book who has a relevant message today, even today. So that's my challenge as a pastor. That's what I want for them. I want them to see the beauty of the Bible, the beauty of the message that we can find in the Bible. And usually, the only way for them to see this is that also if the Bible was also beautiful to you, if, if the Bible makes sense to you, if the Bible is special to you. Um, it's easy for me to share how much I love my daughter. If I start talking about my daughter here, I don't need to force, I don't need to, uh, because I love her. Immediately you will see that you know, I remember I, I had a friend uh, before I had my daughter. Uh, I was looking to him. And, you know, when the kids do something very simple and he was starting smiling, like, oh, <laughs> and I say, my goodness, what is that possible? You become a father, mom, you become like this with simple things. So simple like that make you smile like this. But then I realized now with my daughter, small things just make me happy just because I love her. You know, that's it. So it's easy for me to share. Uh, if I start talking about her, easily you see how much I love her. And I think the same happened when we talk about the Bible to our youth group. As much as we love the Bible, they will see. And this um, also can be an inspiration to them if we share the Bible with love. Or always, of course, asking um, the Holy Spirit, which I, I think I don't have to point this out because we all agree that in the end, the Holy Spirit will lead us through all this process and also prepare the heart of the, our youth for the message that we are sharing. Um, just as a, uh, here is the summary for those who want maybe to take a picture of the screen and have all of them seven in the, um, so you can take a look later. Um, here are the summary of all the seven that I present today. And I just want to share with you just two resources that, that maybe can be good for you. This is a brand new Bible study, Adventist Bible study. Uh, is designed for millennials in postmodern. It's from a pastor from Australia and was released, I think, 10 days ago. 10 days ago. And it's really nice. It's well designed and it's based on narratives from the Bible. So, and it's, uh, you have 30 lessons, small lessons to narratives, inductive, who promotes dialogue, all these principles that I share with you, you can find in this uh, Bible study. Um, I bought my Bible study, you can buy online a PDF version, and you can immediately download, or you can buy through Amazon and have the, the copy. And uh, the PDF version is prepared, is designed for you to print in a normal page so you can have that with you. So I suggest for those who want to uh, introduce um, the Bible topics, maybe this Bible study can be really, really good and really, really useful to you. Also, arise.online is the website from Ty Gibson and his group where they promote how can you share Bible studies with postmoderns and this new generation. It's really, really interesting. They have a full course. I think it's 185 lessons. It's a six-month course that you can take 
based on the topic that we are sharing, that also can be very good and very useful for you. He, they take the, the, the story of the Bible, they, um, they divide it in creation and covenant and um, gospels and church and prophecies. They create in a way very good that you can use to present to your group. Anyway, thank you for your attention. Um, I hope some of these tips can be benefit, um, can be useful for you. And um, let's continue in this journey. As I, again, I am in this process. I'm trying to apply all these. They are not easy. Sometimes um, we don't have time to prepare. So we just present what we, we have. But I am trying every, every moment that I bring my group together to present in a way that this, as I said, in the end, they can see the beauty of the Bible. May God bless all of you. Thank you.